Hey everybody, welcome back to Retro Modding News, my weekly video where I talk about what's new and upcoming in the world of retro console modding. First up this week, we have an update from Todd Gill about his 3D printed Mr. Case. I talked about this a couple of months ago, but it looks like he's actually had time to print one of these, and it looks like he's integrated a SATA hard drive holder. I really like how everything seems to be exposed in the back. It seems pretty easy to work in if you ever want to open up your Mr. and work on it. However, it looks like the case is gonna take a really long time to 3D print. It looks about 24 hours for everything from the top top and the bottom and the back parts. I don't think that would really deter people who have their own 3D printers who just want to 3D print this file. However, I can understand that this might affect if Todd Gill wants to sell these at all. 24 hours is a long time and 3D printing hours. There's definitely a lot of places where this print could go wrong. Either way, we'll have to wait and see what Todd Gill wants to do with this case if he's gonna decide to sell it or maybe just release the files for people to print their own. Next, we have an interesting post from Rocker Gaming. It looks like they developed a 3D printed holder for the Raspberry Pi Pico for you to put inside of a GameCube for use with Pico Boot. Pico Boot is the new IPL mod that I talked about last week, and so far it looks like it's just kind of throw a Raspberry Pi Pico into your GameCube. I know there's a couple of different ways people have mentioned to do it. I think you can double-sided tape it to a spot inside of the GameCube. But I definitely think it's interesting that people are trying to develop these 3D printed holders for the Raspberry Pi. The Raspberry Pi Pico is a pretty small board, so it probably won't take that much effort to get it kind of crammed inside there. So it looks like this one is going to be sort of above the memory card slots in the front of the GameCube. Also, while we're on the same subject, Greg from LaserBear has developed a Raspberry Pi Pico holder for the GameCube as well. His is a little bit of a different design. It looks like it's kind of a snap fit. You kind of put the Raspberry Pi in this thing. And if you look at some other pictures on his Twitter lately, you can see that this bracket is supposed to kind of go around where the fan is on the GameCube. I think either one of these Raspberry Pi Pico holders is gonna be an awesome addition for anybody looking to do the Pico boot in their GameCube. It offers just a little bit more insurance that you're not gonna have the Raspberry Pi kind of flopping around in your GameCube. Next Next, I saw a couple of interesting RetroTINK 5X Pro adapters from Kaitor Industries. This first one here is another one of those SCART inverters. Basically, the RetroTINK 5X Pro has the SCART port facing the front of the RetroTINK instead of the back. So this is another adapter that will flip that SCART port so that it's facing the back of the RetroTINK. However, they do have another interesting adapter that is this one here, which is a BNC connector adapter. It plugs into the same spot here on the back, basically where the SCART port is. But instead of a SCART port on the side here, it actually has four BNC cables and the left and right audio. Now, why would you choose this over using the SCART flipper thing? Well, this adapter is supposed to have good compatibility with the Extron Crosspoint. The Extron Crosspoint, if you didn't know, is a giant matrix switcher for analog video, but it uses BNC cables. So this adapter would allow you to use pretty solid BNC cables to connect your RetroTINK 5X to that Extron Crosspoint. Both this adapter and the SCART adapter that I mentioned before are currently available at their store. You can even buy the PCB pre-assembled if you want to save a little bit of money and 3D print the case yourself. Next, we have a pretty out of the blue update from Behar Bros. It looks like there's going to be a new AV adapter for the original Xbox. They're calling it Zedusa, which is sort of difficult to say. Let's take a look at the pictures here. So it connects to the Xbox using the Xbox AV adapter thing, and it has both a component video as well as an HDMI output. I do see a composite video output here, but I'm not really sure if that's actually a composite video or if it's something else. Oh, I actually went to the website here and that yellow port is actually a coax audio output. Anyways, it looks like you should be able to simultaneously output to both the component video outputs as well as the HDMI. So if you're trying to play on a CRT TV, you can connect the component cables. And if you also want to stream or capture that footage, you could do it at the same time with that HDMI output. This seems like a pretty interesting adapter. I really don't know anything about the Behar Bros products other than I know that they exist. I don't own any of them, so I can't really speak to the quality or anything. It is a little pricey at $65. I know there's probably other solutions at this price point, but if this is something that fills your need, you want component and HDMI output at the same time, then this Zedusa adapter might be for you. Next, we have a quick update from Postman about a GBHD Advance SP version. So the GBHD Advance is a Game Boy Advance consoleizer that uses the normal size Game Boy Advance motherboard, but this version is gonna be one that will work with the Game Boy Advance SP version. There's no screenshots of the case or anything, I can only imagine that the case that they're developing is going to be pretty small because the Game Boy Advance SP motherboard is pretty small. I also don't know if there are any major differences between the bottom FPGA board there. I actually have the other GBA HD Advance board and it looks a little bit different. I think the FPGA is the same, but there's some other chips on the side here that are different than the one in the photo. So I guess we're just gonna have to wait and see when Gamebox 
releases this, if there's going to be any price differences between the normal size Game Boy Advance consoleizer. This should be another good alternative for having a Game Boy Advance consoleizer for the Game Boy Advance SP. Last but not least this week, we have another GameCube IPL mod, this time from ManCloud. I know that the Pico Boot was just released last week, which is an open source IPL mod that uses a pretty inexpensive Raspberry Pi Pico. So it's a little bit unfortunate now that ManCloud is announcing this project. I still think that it's an interesting project and having alternatives to the Pico Boot is only a good thing. It seems to have some of the functionality that the Pico Boot does as far as booting from the SD Gecko or SD to SB2. You can skip the OEM IPL, which I think is the same thing that the Pico boot does so you can boot directly to Swiss instead of the GameCube BIOS. There's also booting an integrated dole. I don't know if that means you can load Swiss onto this mod somehow and that way you don't need to store Swiss in a separate SD card. And ManCloud even has a question here about what should happen when there is no SD card in the system. Should it load an integrated dole in the mod chip itself or should it just boot to the normal GameCube BIOS? Anyways I'm interested to find out more details about this Kunai GC IPL mod. Who knows maybe it'll be even easier than the Pico Boot to install, or maybe there will be some other advantages to using this version over the Pico Boot. That's it for this week. If you want to suggest a new story to me, follow me on Twitter or join the Discord. If you want to watch older retro modding news videos, you can check them out over here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.